Sorry y'all, daddy went to the store for some milk and uh, forgot to come back, but I'm here now. Today we're going to be getting into creating a basic UI for the game. We'll need this UI for when we start placing buildings and telling our colonists to do stuff. Key things we'll need for our UI for now, based on the checklist, are going to be a build menu, a designate menu, a tasks menu, and a bio menu. First thing we're going to do is make it so that when we click on the screen, our unit doesn't start moving around. Just go in and remove the input code. While we're here, I also want to override the unit's get class function so that it returns a unit rather than area 2D. You'll see why we do this later on. Now let's go ahead and build out our simple UI. I'll add a canvas layer so that the UI follows the camera, the GUI base control as a child of that, and set it to full screen. Then I make some child nodes for the separate menus. For now, we'll just have our base menu and our construct menu. Give the base menu an HBox container and then add in our buttons as children, and just name them accordingly. Move your HBox container to wherever you want the buttons on the screen. I put mine in the bottom left. Now turn off the visibility on your base buttons and do the same thing for our construction menu, making sure to include a back button. I personally set the minimum size of each to 125, but you can make this menu look however you want. I also added in some icons for ease of use. If you want to do this, make sure that you enable the expand icons option. I also added in the little information panel so that you can get info on whatever's selected, like a unit, an item stack, or a building. For now, the info panel is just a color rectangle with a label. Last thing we need to do is go through and make sure that the basic control nodes don't catch our mouse input so that we can click on other things in the game. Make sure that the control nodes, color rects, and any container's mouse settings are set to pass. Alright, now that our basic UI is built out, let's add a script to the GUI node. We'll have a variable called selected object that has a set get. This is why we override the unit class's get class function, since selected object could be a lot of different things. We need to make sure that the info panel correctly displays info for whatever it is. This way we can check what type of object it is and set the panel accordingly. For example, if a unit selected, we want to show the name. If a stack of items selected, we want to show the name of the item and however many are in the stack. If nothing's selected, then this info panel just shouldn't show. Also, uncheck BIOS visibility by default, and we'll only show it when a unit is selected. And I know this is stupid, and someone please tell me if there's a way around this, but because of the way Godot 4 works, we need to add a secondary setter function that just calls the setter, since signals require a callable object and the setter isn't accessible as a callable. Set the info panel to be invisible by default, and then let's go back to our unit script to make sure it's working. Give the unit a reference to the GUI, then give it a signal called unit selected. Now let's give it an input event and emit the select signal as long as this unit has been clicked. Go up to the ready function and connect the unit selected signal to the GUI's set selected object function. This is why we had to add that second function, since we can't just put the setter here. Now if we click on a unit in the game, the info panel should show up with the name of that unit, which is currently none by default. We'll get to randomize colonist names later. With that working, let's finish up the UI for now. We can switch this to an actually scalable solution in the future if we need to, but for prototyping, let's just keep it simple. Connect the construct button press to the GUI, hide the base buttons if it's clicked, and show the construct screen. Do the opposite for the back button. The very last thing we'll add is the ability to deselect things. Add a GUI input event, connect it to itself, and make it so that it deselects the current object if it's pressed. Make sure to include the press part or it will fire every time the mouse comes up too. With all that, we got a functioning UI that we can use next episode to start placing walls and floors. So I'll catch you next time.